James Bond was right, and he already did the test long time ago. There is a difference between shaking and stirring. I would like to treat water the same way I treat a beautiful woman. The Egyptians had no idea what radioactivity was either. That's our state of knowledge. Perhaps in 10 years we'll understand what it's all about. This statement that water has a memory, of course that practically changes our whole way of looking at the world. Water is a bearer of secrets. It's full of mystery. It is always helpful when it comes to creating and preserving organic life. It stubbornly resists when we try to make it obey the established laws of physics. And then it lets the secret out, but poses a hundred new mysteries. To physicists, water is abnormal. While other materials contract as they cool, water expands when it freezes, making it lighter so that it floats on the surface of liquid water. If it sank to the bottom instead, life could not exist down there. The oceans would be one giant iceberg. 4.5 billion years ago, the conditions on the surface on Earth were very, very hostile. We don't know how it happened, however, we do know that it happened in what is called the primordial soup. This was a soup, in quotation, that was made from water and a mixture of many different molecules. The first organism that appeared were the bacteria. Nobody knows, and this is one of the greatest mysteries of science, how life evolved from the inanimate matter. The response to this unanswered question is most likely to be found in water. That's where we must begin our search for the origin of the first living creature. Can the water of today tell us something about the beginning of life? How the first organisms emerged from the sea remains another mystery. The Institute for Statics and Dynamics of Aerospace Structures at Stuttgart University. Professor Bernd Kreplin is a recognized and successful scientist in the aerospace field. Together with his colleague, Regina Henschel, he's been exploring the question, can water pick up and store information? This investigation could shake the foundations of traditional physics. The statement that water has a memory practically changes our whole way of looking at the world, of course. Let's travel down the Rhine in the figurative sense. The water is flowing down the Rhine, picking up information everywhere it goes. So the water has more information at the mouth of the Rhine than it had at the source. And the Dutch, living at the mouth, when they drink that water, they're also drinking all that information. Thus, the world's oceans would no longer be something that separates us, but instead a giant storehouse of information, and the rain would perhaps be a data medium carrying information to the world. A great notion. But what kind of information is this? Can we make it visible or even measure it? In order for experimental results to be considered valid, they have to be repeatable. 
But how can we look inside a drop of water? The Aerospace Institute in Stuttgart has discovered a relatively simple way of making the structure of a drop of water visible. The drops are placed on a sheet of glass and allowed to dry. Under the microscope, they reveal fascinating images that can be photographed with a special camera. The researchers have had their efforts rewarded by insights into a very beautiful world. Each drop has a face of its own, unmistakable and unique. Why are the individual drops so different from one another? What do the photographs tell us? Who can interpret them? What information is stored in them and where did it come from? perhaps from humankind itself? Here we have person A who does something, and person B who does something, and person C who does something. They've all placed drops on a slide. They were from the same water, and now they've all dried. And each of these three drops looks different. We didn't change anything ourselves, and yet we get three different images. Thus, the differences must come from the three persons. And that, of course, made us want to find out how it could be possible, or better yet, whether it could be possible. So we got a lot of people to come to a lecture hall here at the Institute, gave them all the same water, had them make drops at exactly the same time, collected all the drops, and then discovered that each individual produced different images from the same water. And here you can see the results. Here on the right you can see that the images of the individual students are different, but those made by a given student are all quite similar. This is the work of the first experimenter, this one here from the second, this from the third, and this from the fourth. Individually they can quite easily be reproduced, but you would never have thought that they were all from the same water, because when you compare the images from the different people you see some big differences. So it must be the case that information from the experimenter, who was holding the syringe in his hand but never touched the water, must have been transferred to the water and was captured in this image. Researchers around the world have been persistently trying to get water to reveal its secrets. Often it takes an accident to lead to a surprising result. Those who thought they knew everything about water have had to admit how little they really knew about this element. A sensational report arrived from America. Water was not originally the subject of research by the American TV technician John Cancius from Pennsylvania. He was looking for a way to fight cancer cells in the human body. One night he had the idea of injecting gold nanoparticles and then exposing them to radio frequencies. The radio waves are said to heat the diseased cells and kill them without harming the healthy ones. By chance he also discovered that radio frequencies can split salt water into oxygen and hydrogen, thus providing a source of fuel. The interesting thing is that's probably around 1500 degrees centigrade. This is uh, the most abundant uh, element uh, in the world, water. And salt water is everywhere. Uh, and to see it burn uh, actually gives me chills. No one has yet explained this phenomenon, but it is clear that the strong flame it produces can, for example, power a Stirling engine. The renowned physicist Rustam Roy had this to say about the discovery. It is the biggest discovery in water research in 100 years. That's in, John In 100 Bonner. years? in water research. In fact, there is no guarantee that every discovery will contribute to human progress. Not without reason does it make an inventor shudder to realize that radio waves can make seawater burn. The idea that the black gold of oil might be replaced by the white gold of water to power the Earth's tens of millions of cars has something frightful about it. 